All right, let's talk about some of the first steps in analyzing data. Ignore my uh, three-year-old three -year here in the background if she talks. This is for the IS415 class. So we've got a data set here. This is the one we use in class. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's, uh, let's keep going here. So first things first, we need to convert as much of this as possible into numeric data. So here is the numeric sheet. We used this in class before. Uh, first thing I want to do is analyze some descriptive statistics. So even though we're not going to be doing our data prediction in Excel for your system in class, this is a good thing to do with your data set initially. If it's too big for Excel, export a random set and explore the data in Excel to find oh, out if there's any transformations that are needed in the data. <laughs> so here's what we do. Uh, go to data like we did in class. If you weren't there um, and you don't have this data analysis option right here, make sure you go to file, options, whoops, add-ins, Excel add-ins go, and make sure to add the analysis tool pack. If you're in the Mac version, I think someone said you go to tools, and then somewhere inside the tools menu, there's a place to add in this analysis tool pack. Anyway, go to data, data analysis, descriptive statistics, OK. Input range, grab everything, including headers oh, of this group idea. of uh, like numeric data here. Uh, labels are in the first row. We're going to print out to an output range. Click down here. Move over. Somewhere right around there is good. Print it out. Okay. Please choose. Oh, whoops. Summary statistics. Thanks. I don't care about confidence interval. What I really want to know, and the reason why I'm doing this, uh, is although it gives me the mean, standard deviation, all that stuff, I, I don't really care about that as much. What I'm interested in is right here, kurtosis and skewness. These are numbers that matter. They have to do with how non-normal your data is. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, I'm going to go to Google Images. Uh, images, there we go. And one of the assumptions when we do predictive analytics is that the data exhibit or follow a normal distribution. Normal means it's a bell curve. So uh, it's uh, we have small counts of, of data on the tails. Most of it's in the middle and it looks like this. So we have violations of normality like right here. So here's a few examples. So this chart here is tall and skinny. This one's kind of low and wide, meaning uh, it's not like this prettier bell curve right here. This right here is, um, well, I'll talk about that in a second. And then other problems we have are when it's grouped off to one side with a long tail over here. That's another example. So let me show you exactly what each of these mean. Let's start with uh, skewness. All right. Skew data, which is the one that often concerns me a bit more. Well, they're both can be a problem, is when it's lumped to one side with a long tail, positive or negative skew. So let's look up the rules. Rule for skewness. There we go. Now these rules are, they're not really hard and fast rule. There's not a lot of science behind them. It's someone's best educated guess or suggestion as, as to what you should follow. So with skewness, uh, zero means the data is perfectly symmetrical, although it's going to be unlikely. So uh, skewness less than negative one or greater than one is highly skewed. Let's take a look at our data. All right. So here's skewness. Less than negative one? Nope. Greater than one? Nope. Do we have any problems here with skewness or kurtosis? Or skewness? Doesn't look like it. None of it are that bad. Some of them are close, though, especially down here. This one of negative 0.8. Uh, this doesn't look nearly as uh, nice as um, as you might think. In fact, for example, let's let's look at the skewness for this is let's see uh, homeowner. Uh, that's probably not the one I want. How is income? Okay, good. Income is very skewed. Let's graph that. So this isn't above 0.1. It's 0.75, but that's still going to look somewhat skewed. So I'm going to grab income here. Actually, no, let's insert a pivot chart. And let's go back here to this one. Uh, on original tab, I'm going to insert um, no pivot chart, sorry. Uh, there it is. Pivot chart. 
put on a new sheet, no problem. Let's grab income uh, right there. We want to not sum income, we want account. Uh, in fact, let's put income, a better way to do this, stick income here on the... No, that's still not what I want. Let's change this to value field settings count. Okay, there we go. And this is what I'm looking for. Okay, so see how my count here is not a, a nice, pretty bell curve. It's skewed positively. It's skewed over here to the left with a long tail of people up here. So what I want to do is a transformation to help make this a little bit more normal than it used to be. So before we do that, let's look at kurtosis. All right, back here. Numeric, this is the one I want. We have kurtosis. This is where I've got a tall, skinny graph or a low, kind of fat one, rather than a perfect bell curve that has a certain number of standard deviations in it. So let's go back here to our images, change this one to kurtosis. All right, here's a kurtosis problem. Let's find the rule of thumb for kurtosis. All right, if, uh, that's a skewness. Nope. I want acceptable range for... Here we go. Values for asymmetry. Kurtosis between negative 2 and 2 are considered okay. But look, see how this uh, skewness one is different? Let me pull this back up. All right. Uh, let's see here. For asymmetry and kurtosis are between negative 2 and 2 are considered acceptable. All right, I've seen this between negative 3 and 3. Uh, it, it all depends on the context, and this is why I don't put a lot of faith in just looking at someone's rule of thumb. So, uh, let's check this guy's opinion right here. And that's all any of these are, just opinions. All right, um, both. Uh, if either of these values is not close to 0, then you got a problem. So here's some skewness guidelines. All right, here's our same less than negative one, greater than one. Between this, between that, uh, kurtosis, here's our value. Positive numbers means it's gonna be more likely to be tall and skinny, whereas low numbers are gonna be flatter and rounder. Um, so rather than look at or care about these rules of thumb, what I would do instead is graph these things. So I would look in particular at the bigger numbers. So kurtosis for, uh, let's see, it's a fairly big one, negative two, negative two, that's for purchase bike. So these values um, for purchase bike and uh, th these other ones over here, marital status and gender, I'm not gonna worry about those ones as much. Why? Because the range is only zero and one. There's only two possible values. So it's really easy to get bad skewness and kurtosis numbers there. So I I would ignore it for those and rather focus on um, problems with continuous data where there's lots of different options. And honestly, this isn't too bad. Children, let's graph that one. That one might be a bit of a problem. So let's go back to our uh, pivot chart here and change income to children. Sum of children, no, do a count of children. Oh, by children. There we go. So, uh, this one, even though it's also skewed to the side, it's very flat, right? And flatter numbers are indicated. Switch back here. Children, there we go. Um, by negatives. Thanks, Ruby. So anyway, uh, let's talk about how do we fix these things. So my first step is I explore the data and I look at these possible violations of normality. And where I think I've got potential problems, I'm going to perform a natural log transformation. So uh, again, I'm going to ignore it for anything that's dichotomous, where there's just a zero and a one. But instead, I'm going to focus on income and children. Education is slightly bad. Um, you could possibly do it for education, but the reason why I wouldn't is because we've already transformed education from text to numeric, and we don't know if that how valid that transformation is. 
We talked about this in class, but as a reminder, the reason why we don't know if that's a valid transformation is that we don't know if the difference between partial high school and full high school is the same as the difference between high school and partial college. The difference is indicated by a 1. We've numbered them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that assumes that the difference between each level of education is identical, which it may not be. However, I was able to turn education into a numeric field that I could then do an analysis on because there's an order to it, right? We know that one level of education is lower or higher than another. So at least I was able to change it to a number. But since I don't know how valid that is, I'm not going to worry too much about messing with uh, uh, performing a transformation based on the kurtosis and skewness levels. All right, commute distance. Uh, this one looks like that one could be an issue. Um, but again, you'll notice I also transformed that one in the data over here. So commute distance. Uh, this one we can. What we should have done in, with commute distance is rather than just number it one, two, three, four, five, uh, we should have picked like the low or the upper end of each one of these scales and use that as our transformation. But anyway, that's all right. I'm only going to make I'm going to do the transformation once for you just to see how it works. So income. I'm going to insert this right here and simply say income ln equals the natural log of the actual value. All right. Good boy. So, Good boy. oh, sorry, daughter wants me to open up a granola bar one sec. Okay, granola bar opened. So next, we've uh, gone through, we've explored the data, um, we've identified relevant um, columns that may be skewed or non-normal. We've applied some transformations to a few of them. Something I breezed over the beginning because we talked about this in class is how to change data. So again, like I talked about, we were able to change many of those columns to numeric columns because some analyses can only handle numbers. Happy birthday to you. Thanks, Ruby. Um, however, uh, some of these, like occupation, there's no order to this. And so we can't replace this with numbers or region. There's no order to region. So we're going to have to handle those in a different way. Um, I'll stop this video for now, but see the videos on ANOVAs. <laughs> And we'll also address this in our regression prediction.